So um, thank you all for joining the, the session today. It's a webinar um, put on by Boxfish in partnership with uh, one of our key partners in education, Net Control. Um, so thank you for your support, um, Net Control, and obviously Kieran is representing um, Net Control today. Uh, but I suppose that the main event is, is our, uh, our good friend Sue, Sue Harris, who's on the call today from Palesbury Trust. I'll let Sue introduce herself um, uh, shortly. And um, um, Sue's prepared some, um, I suppose, some insight as to, um, you know, how they find, uh, found implementing uh, awareness training within her trust, um, which is comprised of, I believe, five uh, separate organisations. Isn't that right, Sue? Um, uh, you know, in a, in a quick, timely manner. Um, that's hopefully adding some, some significant value. So I think Sue's going to talk a little bit about that um, today. But just to sort of set the scene in terms of what we're going to do, we are going to try to keep, keep it short, sharp and to the point, very similar to our training. So appreciate everyone is, uh, is busy. But um, just in terms of an agenda, um, we've got meet the speakers. So we'll, we'll get everyone to introduce themselves in, in a moment. There's then a, a few slides that I'll run you through in terms of setting the scene as, as to what's going on at the moment with regards to uh, cybercrime in the UK, um, the link, the link then to some more relevant headlines, particularly in education, and I'm sure everyone on this call is very familiar with either sort of local organisations or or others um, that you're aware of that unfortunately have obviously been uh, um, been hit by various cyber threats and, and attacks. And I'm sure we're all aware of sort of you know daily uh, targeted attacks that are hitting our organisations. So we're going through that, and then I suppose the key message is how do we obviously deal with those threats? And I'm sure you know, like everyone on this call. We're all aware it's, it is part of that defense in debt strategy that, that, you know, there's a whole host of things that we can be doing, but often it's the human element that it, it is often forgotten. Uh, and that's not because people uh, don't see it as important, but it's often quite complex to sort of be able to A, come up with the, the, the sort of training, the program, and obviously consistently do that, um, given how busy everyone is. It is. Um, so hopefully we can sort of share some insight as to effective ways to be able to do that. Um, in terms of how Boxers is supporting um, organisations with the help of net control, uh, such as uh, Hales Valley Trust. And then I think the final bit, which hopefully brings it together, is, is obviously Sue's going to um, go through, um, I suppose, her journey and the organisations that she represents, you know, in terms of actually improving that cybersecurity culture within those organisations, but in, a, in an efficient, you know, uh, uh, timely way of doing that for her organisation. So that's the plan of action. I believe the chat window is is operating. So if there are any particular questions that people have, obviously please do pop them in there. Uh, I'm conscious of time though. So what we will do if there's, if there's one that we can't cover off in today's call, we'll be certainly uh, you know we will follow up individually with um, with people um, to obviously make sure we get the the responses. But you know the, the aim today is obviously set that scene. I suppose if there's any interest, any um, questions, you know we will follow up, and Kieran will be key to that afterwards to obviously ensure that we uh, we cover those off and see if we might be able to help and support um, uh, you know everyone on this call with with those uh, sort of uh, requirements that you may have so just to set things off then in terms of introduction so my name is Alex Thomas I'm the VP of sales here uh, at Boxfish um, so obviously in, in terms of uh, commercial elements of the business the growth of the business and working with our partners to support their customers that's where I come in um, I, I individually um, work very closely with our educational uh, customers so you know we have a, a near close to 600 individual educational organizations that we now support across the uk uh, so a significant you know percentage of uk organizations i think there's a few reasons for that which will hopefully uh, come out today but i think the main things that we're seeing is obviously this is a really really important area in terms of awareness um, and sort of the, the testing element uh, to support your user base but obviously schools uh, unfortunately, I've seen themselves targeted more and more now, which I'll come on to in a moment. But it's that balance between being able to do that, but also um, not overwhelming staff because there's so much training and, and sort of other things that users need to do, i.e. their day jobs. And it's just finding that balance of delivering this really important point, which is important for uh, cyber insurance, for uh, compliance, but also allowing users to get on with their day jobs. And, and hopefully that's what we'll come across today. So that's myself. Um, Kieran, do you want to... Give a, a couple of uh, uh, moments, give yourself an introduction for everyone on the school. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Kieran, I'm the project manager of Boxfish at Net Control. Um, so you guys will probably know us from in terms of the ruckus piece that we do heavily and the firewalls, a number of different technologies. So mo mostly focused on infrastructure. 
but we've noticed a real need from clients for cybersecurity training. And you know, this is mainly from feedback from our existing clients and they're saying Boxfish is great. And we took them on three years ago. So it's been a, a pretty good partnership and we're hoping to expand that further. Um, so my role is to support on the demos, get that guys, get that booked up and provide information and um, for Alex and May to kind of continue to support you guys. Thank you, Kieran. And uh, last but not least, uh, Sue, would you mind just giving uh, an introduction, please? Hi, yeah, I'm uh, the Trust IT Manager, Sue Harris, uh, for Hales Valley Trust. We are a uh, trust made up of five primary schools in the West Midlands, and we promote education and equal opportunity for all. And I work with the heads, executive heads, um, directors, the board, all stakeholders, really, to ensure that we're getting the best uh, for our children um, across the board, really, with IT, protection, safeguarding, um, anything IT, really. That's me. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sue. Uh, yeah, really appreciate your, your support on today's session. Um, so, yeah, get on with the, the good stuff. So, as I said, there's a few slides that I wanted to briefly run through in terms of sort of setting the scene. So, we've got some sort of high-level statistics here, which I'm sure everyone um, is, is aware of, but I, I think it just sort of cements what Sue and uh, Kieran have just mentioned around um, you know, the importance of um, cyber awareness when it comes to sort of dealing with cyber attacks and, and attacks that may be hitting your schools, uh, universities, uh, and colleges uh, across the board. There's a couple of stats there that are from the uh, Cybersecurity Breaches Survey, um, where, you know, 39% of businesses have reported cyber attacks um, you know, in the last 12 months, 27% of businesses experience attacks on at least uh, a weekly basis. And 83% of those attacks are, are, are typically phishing attacks. And, you know, I think that's that's a really important statistic there in terms of, um, you know, we'll have a load of stuff in place that is designed to sort of stop these attacks coming through. And, you know, they are a really important part of that, the firewalls, the, the sort of, you know, all those elements that I'm sure you have in place. But it just takes one, you know, either phishing email or a message on LinkedIn or, or, or whatever, um, you know, Teams or whatever it is that you know, if, if a user makes the wrong decision, you know, the implications of that can be substantial. And, and actually, I mean, we work quite closely with supporter of a, a, quite a large um, school in the northwest of England um, who was subject to a, a severe um, ransomware attack uh, about six months ago. Uh, and again, you know, I've worked in this industry for 10, 15 years. I, I understand what the consequences are to these breaches. But even for myself, when I actually understood that, yeah, obviously, all of the uh, all of the exam uh, results, the coursework was basically, uh, you know, sort of um, taken by this ransomware attack. This was like two weeks before GCSE um, uh, examinations and A levels, um, but I hadn't quite understood what the implications are from a sort of an emotional level, not only for the staff, but the parents, but but also the staff within the the school and, and obviously. Uh, the students themselves, you know, it, it got that bad, i.e. all the course that was lost for these organisations, there were no backups, um, two weeks before examinations, you know, the, the amount of stress on staff and, and sort of the school and students was substantial that they had to actually bring in um, actual counsellors to, to obviously deal with those threats. So I, I'd never heard of it like that before. I thought I knew what the implications were. But, you know, these are really, really, uh, you know, really... <laughs> problematic and sort of troubling times from an emotional level for people so I suppose these are why these sort of statistics are, are that important I think schools now are really taking this seriously um, you know the fact that now it's it's important in cyber insurance as well being able to provide evidence of regulation uh, that you're training and testing staff on a regular basis this is now you know part of the culture of organizations and something that Sue will hopefully talk about later on to sort of see how how it's impacted her organization now in terms of um the human error element uh, it's probably one for people just to quickly think about but um i wonder if you know if you were having a guess what what percentage of cyber breaches do you think are due to human error and again maybe just have a quick think of that the answer to that is actually 95 percent of those so despite all those sort of um solutions that you may have in place it's still that human error now that is causing sort of the the, the most problems for organizations and it's because obviously users are still there to make a decision of do i click do i trust that particular page and obviously if you're not training and making them aware the chances of them making the wrong you know the wrong decision there and the consequences of that are much higher um so i think our aim is you know we're never going to make our users cyber experts but if we can impart sort of five simple steps around sort of 
um, you know, mitigating threat. I think that's a, that's a really promising position. And the fact that, you know, before you click, stop, think, should I click? If I, if I know it's safe, then do that. If not, then I'm sure within all your scores and, uh, you know, other organisations, there are processes that you can follow in terms of getting in touch and asking rather than making that mistake. And I suppose that's the, that's the point. And, you know, coming up to Christmas, there's loads of sort of um, themed attacks that we are seeing and, and sort of testing and training um, users on at this moment in time. The, the reality is, you know, some of these are really, really um, specific. They're targeted and very realistic. And there's only a couple of giveaway um, signs that, you know, unless a user has been made aware of, you can understand why these uh, mistakes are, are cropping up and the consequences are there. Now, in terms of education, because obviously that, that's what, you know, everyone in this call is, is representing and um, obviously education organisations. There's some specific stats there. And I think this is quite, um, I don't want to say alarming, but, you know, this is quite, quite interesting. You know, 83% of schools have experienced at least one cyber security incident. And again, that might not be a surprise for, for many of you. 71% of schools have suffered an attack that, you know, was through a, a malware download. So, you know, obviously getting a user to click on something, to download something, and obviously, you know, either lose files or, or, or monitor activity within that school or, or college or university. Uh, you know, from a university perspective, 43% of universities have had exam results infiltrated. And, you know, I've explained about an example of a, a Northwest school there, but, you know, the consequences of that are, are so much more than just losing that data. There's obviously the the emotional impact on students, on parents, and also on staff as well, and obviously the reputational damage of that. So, um, you know, I think these are, you know, you know, the, the headlines here obviously go go along there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but it, it's very much now. You know, it's not that, you know, schools are are not being targeted; they very much are being. Um, and I think, you know, as an organisation, if you've got data that's important to you personally. It might not be you know, important to anyone else, but the fact that you, you have stuff that is critical for the data they run on your organization, that's all a hacker needs to sort of, you know, as a reason to sort of target the organization. And, and that, unfortunately, that's what we are, are now seeing. Now, the good news, uh, as obviously um, Stuart Hales Valley Trust has obviously seen and is, is obviously benefit, benefiting from, is that there, there are steps and processes out there that we utilize to obviously support with that. And, and typically, that's a four step. Plan that we obviously work on and this is to obviously complement all those other security controls that you have in place with regards to your infrastructure so firstly boxes here you know, in terms of our approach we identify who those potentially high risk users are and we do that in the form of phishing simulations which, which again if you're not familiar on today's call um, we basically replicate uh, real world phishing uh, attacks obviously make them safe but use them in an educational um, forum I think it's really important. We're not trying to catch people out here. And I think this is something that really resonates with, with Sue at Hayes Valley Trust. It's, it's actually using it as part of the education. So we, we're showing your users what the latest threats are and educating them around sort of the, the methodology behind sort of how we would actually spot these to understand, you know, should I click or should I not? Should I trust that particular, um, you know, phishing email? We then on top of that have an educational element. So that's in the form of short, snappy, educational bite-sized videos. So, you know, typically three to four minutes long, followed by a little quiz. And that's really important, A, in terms of a learning uh, you know, uh, experience for your users, but also from a compliance perspective, you're then able to, through the reporting section, to demonstrate not only where your high-risk users are and obviously support them by delivering sort of further training and support to those users on the topics that they need, but from a compliance perspective, you're able to demonstrate that you are regularly testing and training your staff, which whether it's GDPR, ISO 27001, PCI DSS, Cyber Essentials, um, UK government, you know, top 10 steps to cybersecurity. They all cover this in some aspect of things that organisations should be doing on a regular basis. And then we constantly repeat that. I think, Sue, you want to talk around, you know, this later on, but, you know, doing something once, once a year, although that's, that's still beneficial, you know, the latest stats are that if you do a training course today, within 28 days, you will have only retained 20% of that information. So obviously we're only doing it once. It's no wonder that users aren't perhaps retaining that information. And that's why that regular and often bite-sized approach is, is really sort of resonating and sort of adding value to, to users so that they can actually retain that information. If you then also add in the fact that cyber is changing almost on a daily, if not weekly basis at the moment in time, we need to make sure that our users are constantly updated on the latest threats and obviously how to stay safe. And that's where that sort of test and trace, uh, test and train um, regular approach is really really critical and i've just got a, an example of sort of a, a journey so you know what we typically do is, is a monthly sort of simulation 
and short snappy training course to ensure that users are aware of you know all those elements so you can see here we take the, the users through a variety of different um, phishing emails both b2b and b2c to make sure that you know there's full engagement there we also do you know from a learning perspective cover all the sort of key topics that um, the uk government and um, gchq ncsc talk about in terms of what are what are the areas that users should be aware of whether that's how to spot phishing you know use of social media safe working from home password hygiene you name it we cover it off in those short snappy awareness videos and i think the key thing is because we're a uk headquartered business we make all those uh, examples those scenarios as relevant to the uk workforce as possible um, not only to the working environment, but also to people's personal lives. Because I think if you can bridge the gap between people's work and personal lives, your engagement goes through the roof. And I think that's a, a really important point that, you know, the stuff that we're telling you to do in the working environment, you should be doing anyway, you know, outside of work. And that will keep you safe in work, but also externally. Now, just to, just to sort of bring some of that to life before we, we, we hand over to, to Sue, you know, some of these simulations, for example. So as, a, as an organization, we track who's potentially clicked on one of these emails, but also who's filled out any credentials. And that's really important to understand what that threat looks like, not to sort of tell people off, but just so you're aware of, you know, which users, which departments, which locations within your, your school, your multi-academy trust, your college or university needs that further help and support to sort of improve our cybersecurity culture. And what we do is typically, there's, there's one of probably uh, well, several landing pages that we can show users. But initially, if you've not done this type of exercise before, it's quite good to get a benchmark. So we'll show sort of a, a whoops 404 page. From your perspective, you get the results as to who's done what. But from the user, you're not, you're not alarming them, for example. But in future, you would actually um, then show them, uh, you know, a custom landing page that obviously highlights in that moment the user's done something they shouldn't have. But more importantly, here are the things that you could have perhaps spotted in that particular email or a step-by-step -step process that you can go through to avoid that scenario moving forward. So in that moment, that user that potentially has just made a little mistake there by clicking on that email is now educated in a much better place to obviously avoid that happening again. One of my personal favorites, and I think, Sue, you're, you're starting to use this one uh, at Hales Valley, is actually showing the user the email they've literally just clicked on and actually highlighting within that landing page some useful hints and tips. So if you'd have hovered over here, you would have spotted this, or actually with a typo here, or actually we don't even use this within the organization. So again, just bringing that to life so that that user is now in a, a really, really uh, you know positive place moving forward. Uh, and just again, in terms of culture within your organizations, we were also able to co-brand these landing pages as well. And um, to again, bring in your, your, your corporate logo, you know, your educational, you know, your crest, et cetera just to again, just show that you are trying to do as much as possible to help and support your users. And this is a positive experience. It's not a, you know, tell people off. It really is, we're trying to build a positive cybersecurity culture to keep your, you know, you safe in the workplace, but also externally. And that's the same for whether it's Microsoft emails, whether we can track who's clicked or hasn't, um, you know, Teams, OneDrive, if you're a Google house, we've got Google examples, you know, some personal ones in terms of Deliveroo, Dropbox. And obviously for some of your finance houses, uh, finance uh, teams, we've got Sage Online Services and similar um, simulations. And these are all very latest real world threats that are probably coming through some of your inbox as we speak. And it's again about getting ahead of these elements so that we can be proactive in supporting those users that need it. So that's the sort of simulation part. And again, just to stress, that is really part of the education. We're not catching people out. Uh, and that's really important. I really want to stress that. We then got a whole host of uh, other educational resources alongside the short, snappy educational videos and training courses that I mentioned uh, earlier on. So we've got posters, we've got infographics. These are great for, uh, you know, sort of internet, um, digital signage around your schools, colleges, uh, universities. Um, so just again, it's another way of reinforcing the key learning points for your for your users. And, and your users can access the training if if you've got a learning management system. All our training is school compliant, so you can incorporate into that. We have our own portal whereby um, if you've got either Google or, uh, or Microsoft, users can single sign on from that uh, using those credentials into the portal um, and access their training like that. So if they're on any device, they can access our training as long as they've got an internet connection, which again gives your users a lot more ownership over that learning experience, it, you know, improves the engagement, the relevance. And I think, you know, from a learning experience, removes any blockers that, that are often there to obviously users doing their training. So that's the that's the training element. And again, you know, if anyone is particularly interested, we can we'll be sure to set up some follow-up demonstrations 
via Kieran following the session to actually walk you through some of the, the training exercises and the reporting specifically. But I think the reporting often is one of the key areas that, that organisations that really struggle with. Actually being able to demonstrate, A, that we are training in our staff and, and regularly doing that. Um, highlighting areas of risk within the organisation, and that's obviously through the simulation. So we have an out-the-box dashboard that, you know, is literally out the box that you can literally pull out a ready-made board pack with two clicks of a button that show you all these elements um, to show that obviously the programme is being effective. And I think the key thing is it's a positive message, all automated. If you haven't done training, there are automated reminders that are sent out to staff, but it really is trying to make your job as an administrator as simple and easy as possible and give you the ability to obviously demonstrate compliance with a couple of clicks, but also highlight areas of maybe, you know, within the organization where there are challenges. So are there particular individuals, departments, locations, groups of users that are perhaps struggling with certain areas? We can then obviously support them with further training or further testing to deal with that threat before it becomes a, you know, a real challenge. So it's all about rather being pro uh, reactive, it's about being proactive and, and sort of sharing a positive message within the organization. Uh, now, Sue will hopefully talk about this in, in a moment, but, but simply, if, if people were coming on board, it is a really short, you know, sharp, we can get you going very, very quickly. It's card-based, so, you know, some simple whitelisting, um, we sync with your Office 365 or Google Instance, and we then apply the learning journey, and that can literally be done within a 45-minute onboarding call. We, we can help you with your communications to staff. So I think, you know, we're looking for products where quick wins, adding a lot of value, but for minimal, A, budget, but also time from your perspective. And, um, you know, th these are things that we've really focused on within the solution and, and can very quickly be rolled out to add that value. I think mean, just, just before we, we hand over to Sue, just to give you sort of a sense of some of the organisations that we are supporting. But again, I think it, the, the key reasons why Boxfish are, um, firstly, we are UK uh, based. So the relevancy of the content, both for work, but also personalised, you know, really does hit home. And I think that's really important. If users are doing training, you know, it needs to be relevant to them. Um, so I think that's important. And I think the second thing is the ease of use and ease of implementation, both from a user perspective, but also from, a, from an admin perspective, being able to sort of get this rolled out extremely quickly. It's automated, it's ongoing, allowing us to show our compliance very quickly. And those are the bits that we've really tried to focus on to make that, you know, as an engaging and, and useful experience for all involved. So uh, that's my bit, I, I suppose, finished off. And um, Sue, if we could bring you in now just to... I suppose, elaborate a little bit more for everyone's, everyone's benefit. I know you sort of explained, um, obviously, your role in the organisation, but could, could you just walk everyone through the sort of, you know, why Hales Valley Trust sort of needed help, what your requirements were, um, you know, initially, and then sort of talk you through sort of the process of, you know, how you found the right solution and obviously fell on Boxfish, why Boxfish, um, just to sort of bring that to life, that would be really useful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Alex. So, um we started off in September uh, 2021, we had um, an audit, an IT audit, and um, I've actually got a piece from our auditor's report, um, his findings and some recommendations. So the recommendations would, were, we recommend additional training, including training to assess how staff protect themselves. This can be done via phishing simulations. Uh, these are not to discipline staff, but to see how staff react. Do they delete the emails? Do they report the emails? Do they actually click the link? Do they go all the way and they sh and then share their email password and their credentials? So that's that's the why. That's why we went and that was our challenge. That's why we had to go and to see if we could find somebody that could supply this um, to us. And obviously, I didn't know where to start looking for somebody or for a company that would provide this because. I'd only been, just been told about this. I didn't know uh, such things as phishing uh, simulation companies existed. Um, so that entailed a, a bit of research then from, from myself. Um, and I wanted to ensure um, our data wasn't compromised, the data, the details are not leaked by staff. Um, and I wanted to make sure that all the teaching staff, um, so that teaching assistants, um, SLT, TAs, non-teaching, um, finance, office staff, directors, anyone that has a log on to our system, that log on, they would get the training. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of why we wanted to do it really. Um, so 
what we would know what we would normally do is we had training but as Alex referred to earlier the training that we were doing was um, PowerPoint presentations perhaps once a year um, and maybe in set days and maybe on staff meetings so we were doing periodic training but it wasn't the type of training that you get when you have boxfish where you get something every month that's delivered on you know different subjects as as Alex has just um, spoken about I've got the uh, the year one learning journey up here. So um, on my wall, I've, I've completed so far uh, cybersecurity fundamentals, social engineering, malware, passwords. Um, we've only had it four months. So that's gone out to all our staff um, so far. Uh, we've got mobile devices, physical devices to go, social media, account takeover, ransomware, safe home working, safer internet uses, usage and credit card for, for to go for the rest of the year as well. And the SIMs that go with that as, uh, as well, you know, the LinkedIn, the OneDrive was fantastic because we use um, teams here. So the OneDrive SIM was, was, was fantastic for people to, to not catch them out, but to think about what they're clicking on. Um, and we didn't actually tell them we were rolling um, this out at all when we put when we did uh, go for boxfish we we said we don't want to let people know that we're rolling it out let's just do a sim and see where we are um and then we'll advise them that they can have their logons and then we'll start the training and we can see um where we've come to you know from yeah, from when from when we started we can we've got a, a way of assessing the uh the scale of the improvement so we just wanted to make something um to just to enhance really a, a cyber security training um and you mentioned about the insurance i'm currently trying to get our um the dfe approved risk protection assurance the rpa assurance and in as part of that they've added um a cyber security section mm -hmm. um which does want actual cyber security training there are other companies that do it but this is this goes away to providing the cyber security training as well it just gives us extra information to uh, put towards our cyber security insurance which you talked about um as well um alex yeah so okay. that was that was our challenge and that was our our journey so um i was just sorry. say in terms in terms of your your process of obviously finding the right solution for for yourselves were there any particular um you know areas that, that you felt boxish sort of you know we're, we're a good fit for the organization you know just just to sort of bring it to life because there's a lot of there's a lot of noise in the in the space and obviously there's quite a few americanized type brands etc that, that, that are out there i just wondered just for everyone's benefit sort of the process you went through and sort of why why i suppose you you know you, you selected boxfish it'd be interesting to understand that if, if you could just spend a little bit on that that'd be uh, that'd be very interesting yeah so um for me i wanted a company that was um a vetted company because I don't want people connecting to our network. We uh, we've got network providers um, who are quite fussy who we connect to. So I wanted an approved uh, yeah. partner. So I went via Crown Commercial, and there are very few companies that do this on Crown Commercial that are uh, approved. Um, I wanted a company that was um, in the UK and held all their data in the UK. That was really important to me. I wanted a company with um, high security standards, multi-factor authentication standards, because I don't want just anybody being able to log into um, to the information and get access to our network. Um, I didn't want the company to be a reseller either. I thought that was quite important to, to me. I wanted the company to actually believe in their product and not just be selling somebody else's product. Um, so that was also quite important and, and um, massive for me because there's me and there's five schools. Um, I needed a managed solution. I needed a managed solution that would um, almost run itself, that I could check in on. Um, and as you said, it even reminds staff that they have uh, haven't completed their training. So it sends reminders out to staff as well and something that would integrate with the current system that we've got. Um, and integrate with our current network providers who, uh, I mean, you, the, your team were absolutely brilliant um, talking to our network work providers and, and we've managed to, myself and your team have managed to roll this out to five primary schools, to all the staff in five primary schools across our trust uh, so far. So, I mean, we had nothing before and now we've got emails being delivered to people every month 
um, I'm looking for them now to engage with those emails and yeah. they are engaging with them because I can see it on my dashboard and I can chase people up that aren't engaging. Um, and it just right. goes to every single account. So, you know, if you don't log on to the account or people haven't logged on to the account um, for a while, but even if a, a member of staff, a member of the cleaning staff logs on, if they've got um, access to the uh, to the system, they've got the training there waiting yeah. for them uh, that's dropped into their inbox on Boxfish. So it's it, it, we've, we've just covered everybody, really. I didn't want to just say, let's do staff and, and you know, t and teaching assistants. I wanted everybody covered who's, who've actually got to log on to the system. Perfect. Great. Well, well, thank you for that. So I suppose the final bit is obviously the results. And I know it's, you know, you mentioned about sort of the journey you've been through so far, but, but could you just elaborate around sort of, you know, feedback? You know, I know you mentioned about the, the, the phishing simulation that, that was a real success in terms of, opening up people's eyes but have you heard any comments from staff around the the the, the engagement you know what personally what do you feel about the you know the videos and the experience the the, the 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 actual sims are fantastic that really impressed me when i saw box fish at first the, the sims were really really good and really convincing and you really had to look at them and if you're not concentrating which is what we want people to do when they see an email that they don't know, you know, that they're not expecting, they don't know who it's from, they need to just stop before they click on it, and it's just making people pause. The minute we said to people, we've got this system, it, 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 there was a bit of a change in people's behaviour to how they look at their emails, and, and, they, and they almost didn't want to get caught. Yeah. So they were really careful about their emails. They didn't want to click on something, they didn't want to show up in the, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the stats that you look at. Uh, they didn't want their name on there. So there was an immediate sort of sea change when we told them that we were rolling them um, box fish out, um, which was good. And the training, I would say to complete it all, it's about six minutes. And that's just in short bites, which is really helpful to the staff, actually, um, because you have a short sort of walkthrough video. I mean, I've done them all. I find them fascinating and really interesting. Um, so and, and it, it, as soon as it comes... In. I'm probably one of the first people to click on it to see what it, it contains. Mm -hmm. So um, you watch a short video that's really, really clear, and then you get a series of about five questions after, and you need 80% pass rate to pass um, those, and they take and they come out monthly, and they don't take long to do. I'd say the whole thing could takes you probably six minutes. The videos are very short, and the questions are very short. Um, and then you can you can see where you are up to with your training. If you just click on your portal and you sign straight in, we just sign straight in with our um, Microsoft accounts, and it just shows you, you know, your level, how many training courses you've got, how many training courses you've done. Um, so I could go up to a member of staff and say, click on your box fish for me, and I can see exactly what they've done if I'm if I'm in person, or I can look online and see what they've done um, online. So that's really good. And the staff find them engaging, um, right. and they can do them in school, out of school. Um, yeah. And it does it, and it, and actually, it does have an effect on on their personal life as well, because you know, as you said rightly at the very beginning, that was something that that stayed with us when we first engaged with Boxfish. That that these this training isn't just for for school; it actually would help staff in their personal life as well. Yes, I think that's a really important point because. As you say, it's not just another bit of training you need to do for work. No. This is this is benefiting me, my friends, my family outside of the workplace, and uh, you know it's going to keep us safe. So um, that's really really interesting insight. So thank you very much for that, Sue. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? I think you mentioned at the beginning something about a forum. Yeah, yeah, I did. I went to. Um, I was going to add that in actually. I went to. Um, I attend a consultative forum um, on a regular basis, um, and I was listening to a speaker there. Um, recently and they were talking about cyber security and I just picked a couple of the slides out for primary um, primary schools um, so they asked some primary schools what training have you provided to minimize the risk or impact of cyber attacks and um, so staff training one-off staff trainings like the same as we used to have 63 percent um, of primary answered um, that they six percent preferred not to say, but uh, sixty three percent had said that they want to. Uh, they did one off cyber training, um, staff training on a regular basis. Twenty two percent said uh, we have pupil training two percent, regular pupil training five percent, parents forty four percent, and governors twenty two percent. So um, 
the staff training one off 63 percent well we don't have one off training anymore so that's that's um we wouldn't be part of that um and then which of the following cybersecurity related threats are of concern to your school and the the biggest one that came through was a phishing attack in the primary sector was 87 percent um insider threat five percent ransomware 13 percent information security 13 percent a DDoS attack, 32%, credential theft, 19%, a fraudulent transfer of funds where you have to pay something, 13%. Um, so that's quite stark, really, if you look at those. Um, that's the, and it, it is on the up. I mean, I started in IT in 2002, um, and there wasn't, we didn't have cyber attacks then, and they're just getting more and more, uh, they're just getting cleverer and it, it's difficult to it, unless you've got somebody like yourself telling us what's coming we it's it's really difficult to try and stay, stay on top i had a, a text message this morning about hsbc fake emails going out literally today before i, ca I came on here so they're just constantly changing all the time yes it's, it's about just keeping it at the forefront of people's minds like we, we can never be 100 percent secure but you know if we're not regularly training and, and making users aware then we're not really giving them as much support as possible. And I think, you know, hopefully what we're doing you know, with our partnership is, is working together to give your users the best chance as possible. And if they're, un if they're unsure, that's fine. You know, that's good. Um, but ask rather than take the risk. And I think if we can get our users to, to have that sort of mindset and that positive cybersecurity culture that it's okay to ask, I think that will deal with a lot of the threats that, that we are seeing. So um, thank you so much for that insight, uh, Sue. That's been really uh, you know, valuable, really enjoyed that. And hopefully for everyone on this call, that, uh, that has been uh, helpful. So thank you for that. Um, I think to be fair, given everyone's time and stuff, I know it's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a busy time of the year. I think we, we're pretty much done there for, for today's uh, session. So I just want to thank everyone for obviously joining. Um, if there are any particular queries or questions, obviously please do pop those in the, in the chat and we'll be uh, obviously I'll see if there's any at this moment in time, but if, if not, we can follow up um, afterwards. But yeah, hopefully it's been a really uh, useful exercise. We have recorded the session, so uh, I think um, Kieran will be in touch with, with a copy of that. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining. If you are interested in what you've heard today um, and obviously want more information, uh, what I would suggest is we are running some short demos at this moment in time. So that's probably the best way to understand, obviously, how we might be able to assist or sort of to learn again through similar stories that, that, that Sue shared today. Um, so Kieran will be in touch or feel free to obviously drop myself a message as well. But yeah, thank you all for joining. And uh, yeah, if we don't speak beforehand, have a, have a wonderful Christmas and uh, we'll speak soon. But thanks for uh, everyone's attendance. And thank you, Sue. Thanks, Kieran. Thank you, Sue. Thanks, Alex. Bye now. Thanks, all. Thanks, Kieran. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.